Welcome to the Innovator Interview Series brought to you by CCOMP, where we help innovators deliver awesome. We are joined by two great guests today, and we're going to jump right in. So please tell us who you are. Hey, my name is Franci. I'm one of the co-founders of BirdBuddy. Uh, I've been building uh, digital products for about 15 years. I'm a bit stronger on the tech side. It's the first like truly hardware product that we're building, uh, which is kind of intimidating, but at the same time exciting, right? Uh, so uh, yeah, we started this journey late uh, December 2019, and you know the rest is kind of history. I'll let uh, Kyle also introduce himself. Yeah, my name is Kyle. Uh, my background is in industrial design. Um, for the past 15 years, been developing a ton of different consumer electronics products um, for companies like Google and Logitech and others. Um, so I'm a co-founder and managing the hardware and industrial design. Awesome, thank you guys. Now, Francie, I'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about the company. So the company is uh, a pretty interesting one. Uh, I, I think the, the fact that it was kind of born uh, during uh, the pandemic, right? The, the thick of it basically had had some side effects in terms of how we're structured. Uh, pretty much it split uh, in half almost between Slovenia and, and at this point uh, somewhere around Chicago area, right? Uh, so it's uh, the, the software and product and marketing and all that kind of lives in Slovenia, whereas uh, the engineering, um, you know, industrial design, logistics, and all that stuff is, is happening stateside. Um, I think we're about 25-ish strong right now uh, and growing. Uh, it, 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 I would have thought that would have been a much harder thing to do to scale team to this size even, but it's so far so, so great. So we're super happy about that part. Awesome. Kyle, anything to add on the company? No, I just, I, I think it is an, an interesting challenge uh, working across so many different time zones, um, having different team members in different countries and just managing it um, both with kind of a centralized hub there in Ljubljana and then a decentralized team in the United States. Um, I think because there was a decent amount of practice um, from everyone due to the pandemic going into it, we kind of had a chance to refine what it is to work remotely and organize things as a team. So I think you know, it, it seemed like it would have been a lot more challenging to set up, but I think all the pieces were in place for us to be able to do this successfully so far. Oh, that's, yeah, that's really interesting. Actually, the pandemic maybe helped, right? Took away some of the pressure to try to co-locate and travel right. all over the world and do all that. It's like, well, that can't happen. So let's just move forward this way. Cool. Yep. Awesome. Now, Kyle, I'll start with you on this question. How did you first get involved uh, with with the company, we'll go to the product next. But how did you first get involved with uh, with this operation? Yeah, our our friends at IOTERRA um, had met Francie and Giga. Um, I think there was a desire to look for funding and to some extent some expertise on the hardware side. So there was an introduction made there. Um, we just it, it felt like we really meshed as far as personalities and goals and vision for what this idea was, and I just fell in love with the idea in general. Um, you know, part of part of the reason that I moved out of big city was to get more connected with nature. We see that, you know, seven out of 10 people have kind of a similar feeling. They feel disconnected. And so I think this was just a super exciting project and venture for me personally. Um, it aligns with kind of what I get excited about. So um, we started out those conversations, felt like it would be a very complimentary and mutual fit um, as far as coming in and joining the team and being a part of this to help grow. So yeah, I, I, I jumped in uh, last August, basically. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. And Francie, uh, for, for you, you said you started in December, 2019. So this was your idea, you started it. Can you maybe tell us about tell, how you first got, first got going? Sure. Uh, basically, uh, the way it happened is that I just came back from the States in late 2019, right? Uh, working on a different project and was kind of looking for, for new challenges and something new to do. Uh, you know, as luck would have it, I was drinking beer with my, uh, the third co-founder, basically Giga, uh, and thinking about new, you know, new project we might want to do. And he, he threw out this idea he had actually for a while, which was a birdhouse with a camera, right? Uh, it, it immediately kind of clicked with me because the previous project I was working on was like a Pokemon Go as a platform. And it clicked with me, basically it's kind of the same thing, right? It's gamifying <laughs> the real world, but not with, with virtual creatures, but with actual birds, right? Yeah. So then we, uh, you know, that same night we hashed out how it could have the AI, how you could have like the collection mechanics and all that stuff kind of came to be, I guess. Uh, I got super excited about it and 
it, it actually, again, because I did have some some free time or at least time that I didn't want to spend doing anything else, right? <laughs> uh, I allocated it towards market research, started building the landing page and all that stuff. And we, um, like the, the first half of 2020 basically was kind of trying to get the thing off the ground to make a good business case for it, right? To show that there's a demand for it, that it's not just us liking the product and the idea, but that there's actually you know, people who can get excited about it and would actually be willing to buy it. So uh, yeah, that was that was how I came to be basically a part of the bird buddy story. Yeah, awesome. Before we jump into the product, just on that last point, um, the statistics on bird watching uh, as a hobby are mind blowing. Like after you start looking at them. So when you're doing your market research, can you tell just a little bit about what you found? Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's bird feeding, actually. Bird, bird watching is a bit of a niche, right? But bird feeding is like the second largest hobby in the U.S. and around 60 million people consider themselves bird feeders. Wow. Like, interestingly, uh, the other 200 million, right, out of the other 200 million, over 50 percent basically see themselves as, as feeding birds some, sometime in the future, right? So even if it's not something that they're doing right now, it, it's appealing to them, right? Um, and I think that that's kind of almost our core audience, right? Everybody who, who would like to get into it doesn't know how to get into it. Now here's a nice, you know, smart product that kind of lowers the barrier, makes it a bit more exciting and engaging and, you know, gets people, um, yeah, super excited about it, I think. That is so cool. Yeah, over 60 million bird feeders just in the U.S. Yeah. And then obviously you've got a worldwide yes. audience. I know you've had a lot of traction, um, not just in the U.S., but obviously in Europe as well. So very, very sure. cool. All right, let's 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 jump to the product um, a little bit. So, Francie, I'll continue with you here. Um, tell us about the product. What problem does it solve and how does it improve the world we live in? Sure. Uh, I think Kyle put it well when I think the, ultimately the product, the, the problem it tries to solve or it helps solve is people losing uh, touch with nature, right? It's, it's a way for you to, uh, you know, get, get a notification that's not a task or it's not a reminder. It's, it's a bird waiting at your bird, bird body, right? <laughs> so I think that's, that's one aspect to it. Um, but, you know, other than that, uh, it, it, again, it has a super broad appeal because people just maybe also want to smartify their, you know, home as much as possible, right? It's a pandemic now. We've kind of been locked in. Everybody's been looking into their backyard and it's, uh, it, it's easy to see how people, you know, might want to have a gadget there that would kind of make that whole experience a bit more engaging, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Kyle. I think to, to add to that too, um, and this is probably more on kind of the impact side of things, which, which is important as a direct to consumer company, having a mission and having something kind of overarching, right. But it's the fact that we're going to have hundreds of thousands of nodes collecting data on species and migratory paths that we can feed into conservation efforts, right? So we think about like larger scale problems just as far as things that we could address with this technology. There's a ton of really fun and educational and, and kind of almost meditational things that we can do for the user, but there's also a massive impact that we could potentially have, you know, for conservation efforts around the globe. Yeah, that is really cool because like you described earlier, Kyle, you, you know, were attracted to the products, you know, getting that personal connection you know, back to nature or moving out of the city, but it's so much larger than that. Like the way you're, the way you're describing it with conservation efforts and migratory patterns, that is, yeah, really, really incredible. Um, well, yeah, um, moving uh, on from, from that just a little bit, when we're talking about developing the product, what services did you hire Seacomp for? Yeah, um, we, as you know, Terry, we, <laughs> we spend a lot of time uh, interviewing um, different engineering firms, different manufacturers, looking at the different models that would exist for us to partner or build up our team internally. How do we want to move forward with that, right? It was very important for us, um, even before we went into the Kickstarter, that we had at least a couple of really strong options that we could pull from depending on the direction that the Kickstarter went. I think in general, um, internally as a team, we did not have the resources to do all of the mechanical electrical engineering. And I think in general, we wanted a team um, that was really cohesive, that had experience directly working between sourcing and engineering and manufacturing. So the decisions that we were making super early on, you know, had those perspectives all baked in so that we didn't design something over here in a bubble, kick it over the, kick it over the wall and then figure out that, oh, those components aren't available or there's shortages or it's going to cause issues for X, Y, Z. Right. So as we were going through this process, interviewing a variety of folks, including yourselves, um, what we found is that like your kind of vertical integration of all these teams 
and kind of the in-house nature to all of this stuff and just the, the amount of experience and kind of um, relationship that, that we were able to build and that, that your team exhibited across those different functions um, really helped us de-risk the program. And I think that's what it's been about all along is, hey, you know, we were interviewing some of the, you know, the Foxcons of the world and the people that had reached out that, you know, maybe on paper looked like they'd be incredible because they're so big. But the reality was um, they didn't necessarily have all the services. We didn't have the confidence that they would give us their top priority or, you know, the A team and that we would get the attention and, and that that would really de-risk it besides them just being big. So I think what we found was a really awesome sweet spot with you guys where we feel like it's really a connection uh, extension of our team. And we have that really close ability to work back and forth. Awesome. Thank you to that, for that. And Francie, talking about you know, the services you hired CCOMP for and along the lines of what Kyle just mentioned, you know, what was most important to you when you were looking for a partner and what things were you most worried about? Uh, Francie, you mentioned you know, it was a little intimidating doing a hardware product. You haven't, you haven't done this before. What were some of your big concerns kind of going into this process? Right. So it has to be a premium product and it has to work, you know, the way it's advertised and, you know, frankly, the way we want it to work for the whole thing to make sense. Right. So I think a, a big part of, of the, like that decision and the whole conversation was to have a partner there that was able to listen and understand, you know, what we want to achieve, not necessarily exactly the specs that we want to, you know, throw at the, you know, at, at you and just have it designed that way, but understand what the intention behind a certain feature and then help us figure that out, right? I think that was super important to us. Again, for it to work as intended, you know, but also to be like that premium product that we kind of wanted to be. I think that's, that's super important to us. Uh, you know, the other thing is that, again, me being anxious because it's a hardware product is that also it has to live outside, right? It has to survive the weather. It has to survive the cold and all that stuff. And um, I have no idea how we would uh, trust somebody to do that without us having, you know, constant insight into the process, right? So I think that right now, if we weren't a big part of that whole, you know, uh, process of, of, of design and development, basically, Come September, you know, when the first units get shipped, we just would kind of, you know, have fingers crossed and hope that it would work the way we wanted it, I, you know, both on, in terms of features and then both in terms of durability. So I think those were the two things that I, you know, personally, I, I feel like were a big factor in us trying to figure out who to uh, yeah, choose as a partner in, in, in developing the hardware. Awesome. Thank you for that. And this is the uh, kind of where the rubber meets the road answer. Nothing teed up here, of course. So based on what you guys just said, how how is CCOM doing? Give us uh you know give give us give us some comments. Yeah, I mean, so on the development side, um, Francie kind of alluded to it, right? Like the fact that um, working together as a team, it wasn't just accepted like build to spec, right? It was it was a much more collaborative in nature, and and there was pushback and general kind of ownership of those ideas and how to make them better, right? Like that was that was a bit unexpected and, and really wonderful um, as far as how we started partnering together and developing the technology because some of the original ideas that we had that we had gotten quotes from others to say, yeah, we'll just build this. You, know, you guys were like, no, we could probably do something more reliable. It might not be as cost effective, but let's test it. And so that was great. So we've had a, a great experience so far as far as working with the engineering teams um, developing the product in that way and, and coming out with better solutions that we that we went into it thinking we, we would have. Um, I think too, the other aspect of this is just the fact that we're in a global logistics and supply chain crisis and trying to navigate this as a startup in a world where you know large auto manufacturers can't even build stuff because they're not able to find components, right? So I think the strategic nature of how you guys have approached and we've been able to work together on this as far as like even how it trickles back to design, building in redundancies um, so that we have backup plans um, if things do come up short or we're not able to secure them or whatever. I've been extremely impressed and happy with, with how that process has gone and to the point that we're at where we do pretty much have a, a plan and a backup plan of how to deliver stuff to, you know, product to backers um, and eventual customers without being ridiculously affected or, or having stuff come out of the blue and hit us unexpectedly that could cause massive delays. So I think just the advanced planning, the care that's put into it and the, and the strategies behind it has all been wonderful. Awesome. Thank you. Francie? 
Um, I don't think I have that much to add to that. Uh, I think that one thing that's, that's kind of important to note here is that we are incredibly fortunate to be able to, you know, um, not, not, not that, because I have no, you know, bearing here. So I have no idea how expensive this stuff normally is, right? But we have the luxury of having a, an insanely successful Kickstarter. And now, you know, the online print sales to be able to, to say yes to all of those tests, right? And I feel great about it. I have no doubts about it, right? But as a, as a, you know, as you're kind of trying to set things up, if you're trying to set them up for success, I think that that's, that's kind of the luxury you need in that case, right? Because the, the cheapest option for us would be to go with somebody who would, you know, build the, whatever spec we gave them. And we had, we'd have no say in the whole process. We would just hope that it would work at the end, right? Luckily, we didn't have to go that route. And I, I appreciate like every, um, you know, every, every dollar that was spent basically during the development that I feel like was spent, uh, you know, for us, again, to build an amazing product, but also to kind of provide some ease of mind, right? To, to know that we're in good hands and, and that things are going to happen the way we, we kind of want them to. Um, other than that, yeah, I, I, I feel like the whole collaboration has been great. Uh, and like that also goes to the fact that, you know, Kyle is an amazing, uh, just an amazing person, but also an amazing uh, industrial designer and has like a really broad understanding of this whole uh, process, right? It's not just how you design the product and make it work, uh, in, you know, in that sense, it's also all of the small things that we would have never thought of. So I think that the combination of of Kyle and Seacom, I think is the reason why we can kind of focus kind of pretty um, worry free, right? Uh, on mm -hmm. the product here in Slovenia, on the marketing here in Slovenia, on, on all those things that, that we can trust that you know, whatever's happening in the US is, 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 is okay. <laughs> I think that's awesome. important. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys uh, so much for that. Yeah. Um, we could do uh, a whole hour or two, Kyle, on the supply chain uh, crisis and how that's impacting sourcing and design and everything else. But it's been it has been really difficult um, to to do all this during a pandemic. Just like you said, starting the company uh, during a pandemic and all the different challenges that that are in addition to the normal difficulty of of launching a hardware product. But we're not going to do that all today. So thank you for those answers. Um, before we wrap up here, I just want to uh, ask uh, Francie, where can viewers learn more about BirdBuddy? Uh, so you can visit our website. Uh, it's mybirdbuddy.com. Uh, we also have a blog at blog.mybirdbuddy.com. It's pretty, I mean, we have a bunch of amazing articles. The design is a bit outdated, but you know, if you're interested in the content, it's, it's, it's worth it. <laughs> awesome. And, and also on Facebook, um, there's a, a ton yeah. of fun content that we post there. Bird of the day. There's just a, really engaging things there and animations and stuff to check out. Okay. Absolutely. Very, very cool. Um, anything we missed or anything else you'd like to add before we sign off? I don't think so. I don't okay. think so. Well, I nope. appreciate it. Well, I will reiterate one more time. Please check out mybirdbuddy.com. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you.